enough, sir! General! What is going on here? Orders of the court, sir. The prisoner was found guilty. Conspiracy against the government by sending a false and misleading dispatch containing forged orders. <laughs> the court has been misinformed. That dispatch was never sent! <laughs> Captain Thorne, General, or whatever your name may be, the President has been fully informed, and I need not say that we look on you as a cursed, dangerous character. Ha! You will be held as a prisoner of war! <laughs> so, my dear Edith, what is it? Love and goodbye? No! No, only the first. Love. Love every day, every hour, every minute. Until we meet again. Until we meet again! Oh. The Star of the Adelphi by Bert Cools with Clive Medicine as Sherlock Holmes and Andrew Sachs as Dr. John Watson and featuring John Bett as Richard Arthur Prince. The Star of the Adelphi. Weather's certainly turned. Yes. Does it affect business? No, you know I don't worry about that kind of thing, Johnny. I, sir, am an artiste. <laughs> Ready? Looking forward to it. Lead on, artiste. Oh, uh, just a minute. What? I thought you were in a hurry. This is important. Mr. Terris! Mr. Terris, it is you, isn't it? Madam, I cannot deny it. This is such a thrill, a privilege. George, it is him. I was right. I told you I was right. Good evening, Mr. Terris. Good evening to you, sir. My uh, wife is a great admirer of yours, sir. Oh, as am I. You're very kind. Mr. and Mrs... Uh, Charlton, sir. Mr. and Mrs. Charlton. Emily. Mrs. Emily Charlton. It has a theatrical ring to it. Oh, Mr. Terrace. Come onto the stage with me, Emily, and I'll make you the most famous name in England. Oh. Uh, Mrs. Charlton works in a dress shop. Shut up, George. And I'm sure she does so most charmingly. Now, I believe I have... Ah, yes. Perhaps I might present this to your lovely wife, Mr. Charlton, oh. if I'm not being too bold. Oh, of course you're not. May I look? Oh... That's you in the Silver Falls. Eric Normanhurst. One of my favourite roles. We saw it six times, didn't we, George? We did, yes. Then, let me see. Ah, yes. To the lovely Mrs. Emily Charlton. One of my most devoted admirers. Oh, Mr. Terrace. And now, good evening to you both. Good evening. Good evening. And thank you, thank you. Come on, Emily. Thank you. Come on, Johnny. Step out, or I shall be late. Well, I couldn't do it. Same thing, day in, day out. I'd go mad. But it's not the same, Johnny. Never is. Mad inside a week. <laughs> Hello. Looks like another one. Where? Oh, yes. Excuse me. Oh, you go ahead. I'll keep out of your light. <laughs> you know more about my business than you let on, you old fraud. Go on. Don't keep your public waiting. <laughs> Won't take long. Ah, good evening. Ah, what the devil? Ah! Good God. Hmm? Something interesting. Oh, something amazing. William Terrace has been murdered. By a theatre critic. That is in extremely bad taste. By an unknown assassin, it says here. Oh, any useful details? Well, let's see. Um, stabbed repeatedly outside the stage door of the Adelphi Theatre, where he was currently taking the leading role in The Secret Service, a successful... If melodramatic, no doubt. ...and popular stage play by the noted American author, Mr William Gillette. 
William, I can't say I've ever heard of him. The attacker, whose features were largely masked by a low hat and a muffler, was seen to smile down, to smile down at the lifeless corpse before walking slowly off into the night. If he was seen in that much detail, the witness must have been close by. Why didn't he chase him? Mr Terrace's dinner companion, Mr Jonathan Graves, retired surveyor... Too old to chase him. Perhaps he just wanted to stay by his friend. Mm, perhaps. Um, Mr Jonathan Graves, retired surveyor, immediately raised the alarm. Police Constable number 272E, John Bragg... <laughs> ah, we understand that the detective department at Scotland Yard has been brought in and a speedy arrest is confidently expected. Ha! <laughs> William Terrace. Good Lord. Mr Holmes, the police have achieved nothing. Uh, Miss Millwood, in my experience, that is not at all an unusual state of affairs. Uh, to be fair, Miss Millwood, they have very little to go on. The street was dark... The killer was muffled up. Something must be done. That is why I have come to you, Mr Holmes. Your notes said that you're acting on behalf of the dead man's family. His professional family. Ah, you don't represent Mr Terrace's widow, then? No. Amy Terrace is too overcome to make any decisions. Of course. I am here on my own behalf and that of the company at the Adelphi. Where the late Mr Terrace has been leading man for some years. And where I am... where I was privileged to be his leading lady. Mr Holmes, this has been a devastating blow to all of us. Please say that you'll accept the case. Mr Holmes, I'm truly sorry, but I, I don't see that I can be of any help to you. I've told the police everything I can, and God knows that's little enough. I've been to Scotland Yard on three separate occasions. Well, my methods are somewhat different from theirs, Mr Graves, which is why I brought you here. Please show me exactly where you were standing when the attack took place. Oh, well... Um, I, I was standing here. We just walked up from Bedford Street. Where exactly was the murderer standing? To the left of the stage door. This is not the stage door? Not the main one, no. Oh. This is a private door. Only Will uses it ah, to avoid the crowds, you understand. Interesting. It's the old royal entrance. The management gave Will the only key. Solid silver. So, the attacker was standing. Uh, Watson, if you'd be so kind. Oh, yes, of course. Um, where? Here? Little more to the left. That's it. And Terrace walked up to him from here. Correct. How did he walk? I don't understand. Well, quickly, slowly, confidently, reluctantly. Oh, I see. Not reluctantly. Will was always gracious when he was approached in the street. Very good. Then he walked up to the man in a friendly, open manner. Exactly. Yes, and stopped... Uh, how, how far apart were they? Hmm? Uh, w a little closer. No, no, no that's too much. Hmm? Yeah. There. Hmm. Uh, almost directly between you and the killer. Now, well, how, was, how was Terry standing? Relaxed or tense? Relaxed. His arms? Really, Mr Holmes... I I can't be expected to remember every detail. Did he carry his walking cane in his left or his right hand? Who oh, is left? How did you know that he carried a cane at all? It was mentioned in the press reports. <clears throat> very good, very good. His cane is in his left hand. And his right hand? Yes. Yes, I do remember. As he walked up to the man, Will put his hand into his right coat pocket. Like this? Exactly. I have the scene exactly. I'm sorry, gentlemen. How much more, Holmes? Not much. Terrace cried out. At least twice. Maybe three times. And then everything seemed to stop. It was the most extraordinary thing. And then he just sort of slipped down. Like, uh, like so? Yes. Yes. You're doing splendidly, Mr. Graves. Terrace was down. The killer smiled at him. Yes. Uh, if, his, uh, <coughs> if his face was muffled, how do you know that he smiled? The muffler must have slipped. Yes. Yes, it had slipped. Excellent, excellent. Now, what else do you recall of the man's face? Nothing. I'm truly sorry. No matter. You've given me vital information. I have? Vital information. I'm glad you were able to make him feel a bit better, poor soul. I only told him the truth. Well, I, I think I can see some of it. Oh, yes, thanks. Mm. Good health. Health? 
Hmm. Not at all bad. <clears throat> Go on. Right. Well, first of all, the murderer was familiar with Terrace's habits. Because? Because he knew about the private entrance to the theatre. What else? Uh, Terrace probably knew the man. If it was a man. Holmes, I've seen the post-mortem report. Two of the blows penetrated the stern, and that takes incredible force. Well, not incredible, merely considerable. Why did Terrace know his killer? Because he walked up to him with no suspicions. Oh, well, we have Graves' testimony that he always greeted admirers in the street. Oh, that's true. So it's possible he didn't know him at all. I don't give up so easily. He knew him all right. How can you be so sure? Well, think about the scene. 7.15 at night. Darkness. Just a feeble gas lamp over the door. The man would have been in shadow. Exactly. However open he was with his public, I doubt if Terrace would have happily walked right up to a dark and, and muffled figure lurking in a doorway, unless he had a good idea of who it was. Well, that makes sense. Oh, we can go further. Terrace not only knew him, he knew him well. How so? Precisely because he was in shadow, with his face hidden. Well, then Terrace must have recognised him from his stance or his clothes or something. We have Graves' word for it. The man didn't speak. You're right. Yes, Graves uh, explained something that had been puzzling me, too. Hmm? What's that? Why Terrace didn't make any attempt to defend himself. Now, usually in a frontal stabbing, there are defence wounds on the hands and forearms. In this case, there was nothing. But now we know that Terrace had his cane in his left hand. And, and his, and his right, right hand in his coat pocket, yeah. Mm. Fascinating. Mm. The cottage. The mansion, more like. Mm. The rewards of fame. Have you ever acted, Watson? Good Lord, no. Hmm? Well, it's a fine profession if you're at the top. And if you're not? Hmm. Let's see if the grieving widow will receive us. Mr Holmes? Madam, this is my friend and colleague, Dr Watson. My sincere condolences, Mrs Terrace. Thank you, sir. Forgive me, but... You are Mr. Sherlock Holmes, the detective? I am. I'm sorry, but why are you here? I've been engaged by your late husband's colleagues to investigate his murder. By his colleagues? The company of the Adelphi Theatre. All of them, sir? Or was it perhaps one in particular? It was. Jessie Millwood. <sighs> Presumably she informed you of her intention. No, sir, she did not. Um... Do you object to our investigation, Mrs. Terrace? If you desire it, I can tell Miss Millwood that I'm relinquishing the case. You may tell Miss Millwood whatever you wish. Now, gentlemen, you must excuse me. I have to visit my daughter. I'll send in the maid with your hats. Hmm. Well, quiet. What do we know about Mrs. Terrace? Um, let's see. Uh, here we are. Amy Terrace, nay Fellows, actress, gave up promising career when she married. Mm -hmm. One daughter, Elline, unmarried, also an actress. Mm -hmm. The Terrace's marriage was famously successful and happy. Yes, oh, more play acting to judge from her reaction to our client's name. Mm. Your hats and gloves, gentlemen. Oh, thank you, uh... Vicky. Oh, thank Sir? you, Vicky. <clears throat> Tell me, um, Vicky. Where does Mrs. Terrace's daughter live? In Camberwell, sir, but you won't find her there. Uh, where will I find her? Where she's been for the past six weeks, poor woman. Charing Cross Hospital. There's something quite eerie about an empty theatre. Oh, do you think so? Hmm. Oh, I, I, I find the atmosphere invigorating. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Yes, what is that smell? Size. Uh, they use it to stretch the canvas on the flats. On the what? Mr Holmes, Dr Watson. Oh, Miss Millward. Come on up. There are steps on the left. Hmm. Ah, <laughs> excellent acoustics. Hmm? Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. A kingdom for a stage, princes to act. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, let me find you a chair. Uh, no, no, I'm all right. Well, Mr. Holmes, have you come to report progress? I have. But that's excellent. What have you discovered? I've discovered that you and the late William Terrace enjoyed a most intimate relationship. I do not deny it. I'm glad to hear it. Honesty is of infinitely more use to me than deception. Do you object to discussing the subject? Not if it will help. It could well do so. Then ask me your questions. Hmm. Exactly how deep was the friendship? We were in love. And we were lovers. And your plans were? William was going to divorce his wife and we were to marry. 
Mrs. Terrace knew this? Yes, she did. Had Terrace already left her? No, he had not. It was all arranged, and then that... And then Seymour Hicks appeared on the scene. Seymour Hicks, the actor? Seymour Hicks has been hailed as the new William Terrace. I believe that qualifies as dramatic irony, Mr. Holmes. But Hicks has another role in this sorry affair. One his adoring public don't know about. What role is that? Seymour Hicks seduced Will's daughter and made her pregnant. When was this? Eight months ago. Oh, he did the honourable thing. He married the girl. In secret. Hicks didn't want his public to know. Dashing young actor, big following among the ladies, you understand? Why is Terrace's daughter in hospital? Do you know? A miscarriage. Lots of complications. Even if she recovers, the girl's career is over. Did you know she was an actress? Yes. Did Terrace accept the marriage? He had little choice. How did Hicks feel about his father-in-law? He was convinced that Will used his position in the profession to stop jobs coming his way. Was he correct? Of course not. Will wouldn't do a thing like that. But Hicks wouldn't listen to reason. He hated Will. Enough to kill him? I don't know. Perhaps. Anyway, the girl's illness. It brought Will and Amy closer. He wouldn't leave her while Ellaline was still so sick. But he promised me, once she was better, once she was back on her feet... Find out who did this, Mr. Holmes. My Will was the kindest, gentlest, most generous man who ever walked this earth. Find out who did this. Hmm. This is very interesting. Huh? What is it? The programme for the Secret Service, the play at the Adelphi. There's a biography of Terrace. Ah, the public face. What does it say? Well, he had an amazing life. Sailor, tea planter, banker, wine merchant. Hmm? All before he was 20. And then he went on the stage. Ah, yes, but he made no progress and he gave it up. Hmm. And he came back to it after a couple of years. More success this time. Taken up by the Terry family. Ah, intelligent move on his part. Get well in with the profession's leading dynasty. Terrace was a star by 81. Hmm. Acted with all the greats, and then invited to head the permanent company at the Adelphi. Well, even if it's half fiction, it's a fascinating story. Ah, that's praise indeed, coming from you. Oh, what next? Are we going to talk to Seymour Hicks? I'm going to talk to Seymour Hicks. You're going to pursue a new line of inquiry. Oh, what's that? We really must learn to appreciate the value of minute pieces of information. We just learned something of great interest about the late Mr. Terrace. We did? Not from that program. What, from Jesse Millward? Yes. My will was the kindest, gentlest, most generous man who ever walked this earth. And in his profession, generosity would almost certainly have brought him into contact with one particular group of people. Sit down, Dr. Watson. Oh, yes, thank you. The Actors' Benevolent Fund is always happy to greet a new patron. Oh, I'm afraid that's not why I'm here. Oh, then how can I help you? It's about the late William Terrace. God rest his soul. What a terrible business. Yes, indeed. What do you want to know? Well, I'm trying to build up a picture of him. I understand that he was a very generous man. Well, it can't do any harm now, I suppose. What do you mean, Mr. Cotson? He'd have had my hide if I'd breathed a word of it while he was alive. Look, it's this way, Doctor. Some people in this business, they do their good deeds right enough, but they do them in the limelight, so to speak. You follow me? Oh, I think so, yes. Works wonders for the old public image. And fair's fair, the money's always welcome, whatever the motive behind the giving of it. But Terrace wasn't like that? Oh, bless you, no. Put his hand in his pocket for anyone in the profession, Willwood. But breathe a word of it outside, and he'd deny it like a shot. And it wasn't just the money, either. Just a minute, just a minute. Uh, ah, yes, here we are. Take a look at this. Um, thank you. This is to certify that I know the bearer of this letter, Richard Arthur Prince, actor, as a hard-working and deserving member of the profession, Will Terrace. Prince was down on his luck. He brought us that, and we helped him out for a spell. Let's see. Uh, no. No. Uh, no. Ah! Here it is, yes. Regular payments starting January 96. Yes, right after the last committee meeting. Well, Terrace was always doing that sort of thing. So, that much is confirmed, at least. How did you get on with Seymour Hicks? I didn't. He's not been seen since the day following the murder. Good Lord. Mm. The daughter. Complications following the loss of a child. Will she be lucid? Uh, Holmes, I will not have you browbeating a woman in her condition. Then you'd better come with me, hadn't you? 
Well, can I see her? No, you can't. Damn. Because she's not here. Mr. Holmes, I thought I made it clear that I did not wish to be involved in your investigation. I appreciate that, Mrs. Terrace. And if you'll answer one question for me, I leave this house and never return unless you ask me to do so. What is the one question? Where has your son-in-law taken his wife? Ah, oh, smell that air. Good for the soul, sea air. Well, I'll take your word for it. Oh, come on, there are worse places than Margate. I'll take your word for that, too. Oh. Now, the Imperial Hotel. Just what are you hoping to learn from her? I'm not sure yet. Her husband certainly had an excellent motive for killing Terrace. Or thought he had. Is it really possible for one actor to affect another's career like that? Well, certainly. The bigger the name, the greater the power. But the daughter doesn't even know about her father's death. How can she be of any help? Holmes, you are not going to break the news to her. I forbid it. Gentlemen, oh. Oh. Mr. Ah. and Mrs. Hicks will see you now. Please follow me. Holmes, do you really think Hicks is our killer? This whole case revolves around play-acting, Doctor. Public faces, private truths. I'm simply trying to take a look behind the scenes. Mrs. Hicks, I apologize for disturbing your convalescence in this way. That's all right, Mr. Holmes. Seymour will tell you that I'm already much stronger than I was. Oh, I'm delighted to hear it. How can we help you, Mr. Holmes? Uh, perhaps I should first speak to you in private, Mr. Hicks. I keep no secrets from Ellaline. Not any more. Then you know, Mrs. Hicks? About my poor father. Yes, Doctor, I know. Are you looking into it, Mr. Holmes? Yes. I'm glad my mother-in-law went to you. Anything we can do, we shall. Oh, yes. Uh, my client is not Mrs. Terrace. Then who is? I was engaged by Miss Jessie Millwood. Dr. Watson, it's time for my wife's medicine. Would you be so kind? Well, of course. The bottles are on the dresser. They're all marked with the doses. Mr. Holmes, a, a word with you in the other room, if you please. Hmm. Now, Mr. Holmes, what exactly has that damn woman been telling you? He denied all of it. You mean he didn't hate Terrace at all? He says not. Of course, you'd hardly expect him to admit it. But well, what's he saying? Jessie Millwood is mistaken? No, no, not mistaken. Malicious. Well, why should she lie about such a thing? To divert our attention away from the truth. But she killed Terrace? Watson, you can be horribly direct at times. There are at least five other reasons why she should want to put the blame onto Seymour Hicks. Plus, of course, there's the distinct possibility that Hicks himself is lying. Hmm? You do any better with a daughter? I was giving her medicine, not interrogating her. You surely didn't let the opportunity slip. No, no, I didn't. But I couldn't push things too far. She also harbours a strong dislike of Miss Millwood. I couldn't find out why. Perhaps because she broke up her parents' marriage. That could be. On the other hand, they are both actresses. It could simply be professional rivalry. Uh, she was definitely concealing something. How can you say that? You hardly spoke to her. Well, surely you noticed where she was sitting. Well... In an armchair, by the window. Well, not simply by the window, with her back to the window, and therefore with her face in shadow and the sunlight in our eyes. She was anxious that we shouldn't be able to read her expression. Mm, significant. I'm afraid you're wrong. What? You're wrong. I can tell you exactly why she was sitting as she was. It had nothing to do with concealing her expression or, or hiding her emotions. Mm? What then? Holmes, she's been deathly ill. She's still far from well. We gave her hardly any notice that we wanted to see her. So? Oh, when I gave her the medicine, I noticed that she wasn't wearing any makeup. Makeup? No rouge, no powder. She sat with her back to the light so we couldn't see how pale she looked. That's all. Women. How can you build on such quicksand? <laughs> Everything hinges on the late Mr. Terrace's true relationships with those around him. Was he a loving husband or an adulterer? Did he take pains to block a colleague's career or go out of his way to support his fellow actor? Well, we have Charles Cotson's word on that. Terrace was generous to a fault. Uh, never forget, uh, but even with people who dissemble for a living. Convincing performances sometimes take place off stage as well as on. Well then, what impression did you get of Seymour Hicks? 
Did he hate his father-in-law? Certainly hates someone. Who? Our client. Or perhaps he just wanted me to think that he hates her. Oh, good God. Actors. Uh, what are you going to do about Jesse Millward? Nothing yet. First, I want to get another viewpoint on the dead man. What viewpoint? The opinion of someone is helped rather than hindered. No! 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 Ah! Good old system never fails me. There you are, Mr. Holmes. Prince's card. Thank you. Uh, Richard Arthur Prince, leading role, Shakespearean tragedy, a speciality. Address. Interesting address for an out of work actor. What does it say? Adelphi Theatre, Strand, London. Was Prince a member of the Adelphi Company? Yeah. Bless you, no. Not in a million years. The real address is pencilled on the back. Richard Arthur Prince. At your service, sir, Mr. Ralph. Sherlock Holmes. An honour, sir. And your companion is no doubt the prolific Dr. John Watson. How do you do, Mr. Prince? I do as best I can, sir. Come in, gentlemen. Come in. Thank you. Thank you. Please take the chair, Mr. Holmes. Uh, Dr. Watson, I'm afraid that all I can offer you is the bed. My other chair is uh, being repaired. Oh, the bed will be fine. Now, may I offer you some tea? Uh, thank you, no. No, thank you. Oh, very well. How may I serve you, gentlemen? We understand that you were acquainted with the late William Terry's. I had that honour. How well did you know him? Well, perhaps these will answer your question. Just one moment. Now, Terrace, Terrace, Terrace. Ah, yes, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. What are those, Mr. Prince? The record of our friendship. Please do examine them, Mr. Holmes. You see, I'm familiar with your methods. I believe that's the phrase, Doctor. One of your loyal readers, Watson. Hmm. Very interesting. The jewel of my collection, sir. This box contains letters from some of the highest in the land, but none mean more to me than those you are holding. Of the highest in the land? Of the Duke of York, the Prime Minister, Miss Ellen Terry, Lord Backwater, the Secretary of War, the personal equerry to Her Royal Highness, <laughs> Mr. Henry Irving. You've corresponded with them all? I have. And I have been privileged to receive their replies, you see. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Balmoral. Her Imperial Majesty instructs me to thank you for your letter and your good wishes for her continued health. Uh, this is your hobby, Mr Prince? Rather more than that, sir. Judging by these replies, most of your letters to Terrace were requests for money. Yes, that was how our friendship started, I must admit it. But it developed beyond that. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It did, Mr Holmes. So, you knew him well? We were kindred spirits, you see. He told me once that he saw himself in me. He told me that once. Uh, did he have any enemies? All men have enemies. But not all men are murdered. No. Do you know of anyone who hated him enough to stab him to death in cold blood? Will was a great star. Many people were jealous of his success. We're looking for something more than that. Well, there was one person. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Mrs. Terris refuses to see you. Please give her this note. Sir. But, um, what did you put? I now know the facts about Jesse Millwood. So you've decided that Hicks was telling the truth? I've decided nothing. I'm waiting for confirmation from Mrs. Terris. It was a bluff? A bluff that worked. Good evening, Mrs. Terris. Thank you for seeing me. Do you know who killed my husband? No, I do not. Do you believe that you can find out? If you will answer my questions. Go on. My client, Miss Jessie Millwood, told me that the late Mr. Terrace despised Seymour Hicks for ruining his daughter's career. That Hicks, in turn, hated him for blocking his progress in the profession. And that Terrace was about to leave you, his wife, in order to marry her. I scarcely know where to begin. Then I shall help you. I suspect that it's a tissue of lies from beginning to end. The woman lives in a fantasy world. Indeed. But perhaps not all of the time. She certainly seems to harbour some sort of 
permanent delusion concerning poor Will. He wasn't in love with her? Oh, there was love, Dr. Watson. But it was totally one-sided. The woman was obsessed with him. She would make up any story she could at the drop of a hat to bolster her pathetic illusions. How did Terrace react to her? It was difficult for him. He had to work with her, appear with her on stage all the time. He, he tried to make her see the truth of it. But she just refused, point blank. And she wouldn't believe him? Would not, or could not. When was this? Months ago. Will made his position perfectly clear, and, and she turned against all of us and started spreading her disgusting lies. Terrace didn't blame Hicks for ending your daughter's career. Well, I knew perfectly well that Ella was planning to leave the stage anyway. I thought she had a promising future. Do you have any idea how hard it is living in the shadow of a famous father? I have heard something of the sort. When Ella fell pregnant, well, it was wonderful. It was what we all wanted. But, but the disgrace. What disgrace? What disgrace? I know your world is free and easy, but w surely... Wait, wait, Watson. Mrs Terrace, how long has your daughter been married? Nearly two years. Why? Oh. What did that woman tell you? It's not important. What about the other accusations? A terrace put obstacles in his son-in-law's path and he hated Terrace for it. It's simply not true. Dr Watson, Mr Holmes... I only know of one person in the whole world who hated William Terrace. And that person was Miss Jessie Millwood. How much do you know? We know everything. He did love me, you know. He did love me once. No. He loved his wife and his daughter. He told you so. Repeatedly. And you refused to believe him. Do you deny it? Yes. I deny it. Miss Millwood. I deny it. I deny it. Don't you understand? I did believe him. I did. I did. I knew he didn't love me. I... And what did you do? I wanted to hurt him and his sanctimonious family. I wanted to hurt him so badly. And then... then... And then he was brutally stabbed to death and his family plunged into grief. Exactly what you wanted. When I heard... I wasn't glad. Not really. I didn't know how to react. Not at first. I'm still not sure. Isn't that ridiculous? Are you saying you didn't kill him? No, Doctor. It wasn't me. How could it be me? I loved him. Even when I hated him, I still loved him. So she came to you purely to implicate Seymour Hicks? Mm, twisting the knife in the wound. Any member of the family would have sufficed. Hicks was simply the most convenient. Such hatred. You know, the killer was completely muffled and didn't speak. It could have been her. Hmm, not here. Let's go somewhere quieter. So, you didn't believe her denial? She is an actress, and a good one. As you so perceptively remarked, on this case, we're surrounded by actors. Yes. And unfortunately, so was Terrace, both in his public and his private life. I've remarked to you that singularity can be a vital clue. You have. Regrettably, in this case, we're talking of a man with dozens of friends, hundreds of colleagues and, and thousands of admirers. Is there really nothing else to go on? Well, if there is, I can't see it. Actors, actors, actors. Public faces, private truths. I've often thought that the greatest criminals would have had excellent careers on the stage. You have? Hmm. Think of the late, lamented Professor Moriarty, hiding behind his respectable public face. <laughs> ah, it's acting of the highest order. I've never thought of it like that. Shakespeare had the right of it. Then he usually did. All the world's a stage. And all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man... <sighs> Holmes? Watson, I've been a fool. You know who did it? I have a suspicion. Well? Not yet. First, I need one vital piece of information. 
You want to know what? I want to know how frequently your committee meets and when. For God's sake, come to the office in the morning. Now, Mr. Cotson, if you please. The third Thursday of every month. Now, if that's all... That is not all. I have two more questions. <sighs> no one's home. No. Wait. Wait, if you're right... I'm quite certain of it. Well, then it's possible... Holmes, we have to get this door open. It seems you were wrong. No remorseful suicide's corpse to excite your readers. Thank God for it. But where do we look now? At the temple of the fallen idol. It's hard to credit. It's entirely logical. You heard what Cotson said. But yes, but even so... Believe it, Doctor. It's time to ring down the curtain. Ah, here we are. The number one dressing room. Good evening. Gentlemen, I don't usually receive visitors during a performance. Then we are honoured. Uh, how are you, um... Um, feeling, Mr. Prince. Have you discovered who killed poor Will, Mr. Holmes? I have. Then this is the climactic scene where you unveil your flawless chain of deductions. It's like one of your stories come to life, Doctor. Gentlemen, do sit down, please. You'll observe there's more than one chair here. Please, do sit. Thank you. Thank you. That's better. Mr. Holmes, the audience is waiting. I believe the stage is yours. All the world's a stage. And all the men and women merely play. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man, in his time, plays many parts. One man, in his time. That was the vital clue I had overlooked. I thought you never overlooked a clue. Why was Terrace killed then? Why on that particular day? Why at that particular time? What happened to trigger the murder? What happened on the 16th of December, Mr. Prince? What happened on the third Thursday in the month? Nothing. Nothing happened. It was the day of the Benevolent Fund Committee meeting. The day they stopped your payments. You went to the secretary. You wanted to know why. Well, I had letters. Letters from him. And still, they turned you down. It was a split vote. Fifty-fifty, Cotson said. And so it was the chairman's decision. Yes. You were angry. Yes. How dare someone treat you like this? Yes. The friend of the great William Terrence? Yes. So you ask Cotson, who was it? Who was the chairman? Yes. And he told you. Yes. And that evening, you went to where you knew he'd be. And you killed him. How could he do that to me? I loved him, and he loved me. He was training me, did you know that? He was teaching me everything he knew. First we were going to star together, then he was going to retire, and I was going to take his place. He said so. I loved him. How could he betray me? Are you confessing to the murder? Come on to the stage with me, my boy, and I'll make you the most famous actor in England. I could have been Horatio to his Hamlet, Mercutio to his Romeo. Brutus to his Caesar? Yes! No. You stabbed him three times. You smiled down at him. And then you walked away. No. No. How, how could I have killed him? He, he was everything to me. Until that day. But I forgave him. He must have had a reason. A good reason. So I forgave him. I didn't need to kill him. Yes, you forgave him, but only afterwards. And then you made yourself believe that it had never happened. You did it very well. You were totally convincing. I was. Admit it, Prince. Accept it. It will go better for you if you do. Mr. Holmes, you are quite wrong. I did not kill Will Terrace. I had no reason to. I'm afraid you're absolutely correct. What? What do you mean? I mean that you killed him for nothing. I don't understand. Explain yourself. Uh, Prince, well, we've just been talking to Charles Cotson. We asked him who was in the chair at that meeting, just as you did. 
And he gave us the same answer he gave you. He told us he couldn't remember. What? He knew it was one of two men. He knew it was either Fred or Charles Terry. No. He knew it was one of the Terrys. That's what he said, one of the Terrys. And you misheard him. It's a lie. You're lying. One of the Terrys, Prince. One of the Terrys. You murdered the wrong man. <laughs> the performance is over. Yes. I'm afraid it is. Terrace, one of the Terries. It seems incredible. Mm, by no means. I could cite you a score of murders with far less likely causes. I should have realised that something was seriously wrong with Prince the first time we met him. <sighs> oh, don't berate yourself. True madness can be remarkably difficult to recognise. I suspect that he simply couldn't face the reality of what he'd done. So he slipped back into an earlier state of mind when Terrace was still his hero. In a way, he was acting. He just didn't realise it himself. It was probably the most convincing performance he's ever given. Now, how did you know we'd find him at the Adelphi? Well, not merely at the theatre. In William Terrace's old dressing room, he played the role of the disciple so completely, he genuinely believed he was stepping into the dead man's shoes. <laughs> a lesson to all hero worshippers. And then we had to shatter the whole charade. We took away his only justification for the murder. I'm afraid it had to be done. I suppose so. Ah, the senseless loss of one man's life and another's sanity. It's been a sobering experience. Yes, indeed. I can scarcely recall a case where I was on the wrong track for quite such a long time. You do understand now, I suppose, just why Terrace put his hand in his pocket. Mm, no, actually, I don't. Well, I can't be sure, of course, but I strongly suspect that he recognised Prince, realised his plight, and reached for some coins. Oh, dear God. He was going to give him money? Mm. At the very moment he was murdered for supposedly withholding it. Mm. Tragic. Terrace. Oh, both of them. Hmm. <clears throat> You realise, of course, the, uh, the final, supreme irony. Another one? Isn't the money thing enough? Mm. I rather think poor Prince would appreciate this one. What on earth are you talking about? Well, don't you see it? For all the self-deception, he was quite right about one thing. Thanks to Terrace, Richard Arthur Prince is about to become the most famous actor in England. In The Star of the Adelphi, Sherlock Holmes was played by Clive Medicin and Dr. John Watson by Andrew Sachs. Prince was played by John Bett, Graves by Philip Anthony, Terrace by Andrew Wincott, Mrs. Terrace by Richenda Carey, Ellaline Hicks by Jasmine Hyde, Seymour Hicks by David Bannerman, and Jesse by Helen Ayres. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The violinist was Leonard Friedman. The Star of the Adelphi was written by Bert Coules from a reference in the short story The Second Stain by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The director was Patrick Rayner.